Hey, what's going on guys? It's Thulian. It's been a second or two since I made an actual video, but today I am here and I got some content for you guys. And to be honest, I'm just sitting here using Windows Voice Recorder to record each of these takes because we all know that if I was doing commentary over a game that it would sound like straight booty cheeks. Like holy shit, it's been a second since I've done a gameplay commentary. But nonetheless, my goal today is to rank each of the Don't Hug Me I'm Scared episodes. And we're gonna use a little mathematical system here to determine my ranking for each one. So as I'm sure those of you watching this know, Don't Hug Me I'm Scared's episodes are actually musical. And given that music is what composes all of the episode, it's a pretty major part of it. So because of this, I'm gonna rate the song quality of each Don't Hug Me I'm Scared episode, and I'm gonna multiply this value by 0.5. And then obviously it's a video, so the scenery, the uh, cinematography is very important. So I'm going to be rating those things from a value of 1 to 5 and multiplying that by 0.25. And then finally, another key piece of Don't Hug Me I'm Scared is the antagonist or the villain of each episode that sings the song. So I'm also going to be rating that character's personality, how memorable they are from 1 to 5, and multiply that by 0.25 as well. And then we slap those three criteria together and we got a full rating of each Don't Hug Me I'm Scared episode. So just to explain this a little better, I'll bring up an example. So let's just say that I rank a particular episode a 4 for the musical quality, a 1 for the cinematography, and a 5 for the villain. You plug those values into my little weighted equation here and it comes out with a total of 3.5. And then 3.5 would be the final score for that particular episode. All right, I think enough's been said. Let's get right into episode one. What's your favorite idea? Mine is being creative. All right, episode one of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Obviously the creativity episode. And unfortunately, we're gonna start on a down note here with the musical quality of the episode. Because in my opinion, the song for episode one is just lacking overall. Now don't get me wrong, the music does sync with the video well, and I love the part toward the end when the music starts getting more and more distorted and corrupted to match just the horrifying visuals that accompany it. But on that same note, that doesn't necessarily sound good, and I don't really like the notepad's voice as she sings, it's just not a very good tune to me. However, I do respect the original song, it was catchy enough to make the series popular as all hell, and there are some very very good moments in it. But personally speaking, I'm not a huge fan of the instrumental when compared to some other classics, and I also don't like the notepad's voice too much, so I think we're gonna have to roll with a 2 out of 5 here for this rating. But, speaking of the notepad, next up is the antagonist. Now hear me out here, the notepad is freaking amazing. I adore the part where she flips her pages and it shows different images that match the song's lyrics, I think that's super cool. But on the same tone, she's just a notepad. Most of the time when we see her, it's just a white sheet of paper with some eyes and a mouth. And the personality is fairly bland, although we all know this moment. But I feel like that's the issue. There's these moments where she's not on screen that defines this episode, but there's not really any moments with her in it that makes this episode's signature. Like the notepad is never the focus of a key moment, always just around it. So I think I'm gonna have to give the notepad's personality a 2 out of 5 yet again. Okay, but finally, we have the cinematography. And I freaking love it. The visuals in this video completely sync with the song, everything lines up so well, I love the setting, and I absolutely love the part when they turn into little CGI characters and you get to see around the whole film stage and it just syncs up with the music getting more and more distorted and just getting worse and worse. So although I don't like the villain nor the audio to this video too much, the visuals, absolute 5 out of 5, I adore them, they are just amazing. And you think of one of the most classic moments in this episode, the black ink falling on the clown painting and just that long, drawn out pause, I just think it's shot beautifully, I need to shut up now. So that leaves the original Don't Hug Me I'm Scared with a score of 2.75. Time is a tool you can put on the wall or wear it on your wrist. Moving on we have Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 2 which of course is about time. And I definitely love the music to this episode much more than its predecessor. The clock setting the beat for the whole music, it just creates an excellent rhythm and I think it's very catchy. 
And there's this really signature moment I remember in the song where Tony the Clock is explaining to them what happened to time as this, like, excellent piano plays in the background. It's just a really good bridge in the song. And I do think the beginning is a little bit dull, but it really builds up toward the end. And I love Tony's final speech as he tells them, you know, it's out of my hands, I'm only a clock. And then the clock in the background gets more and more intense as they all start, you know, disintegrating and getting bloody. I just absolutely adore the instrumentals of this one, and I think I'm going to have to give it a 4 out of 5 on my quality scale. And moving on to one of the easiest 5 out of 5s I've ever given, the personality of the villain. Tony the Clock is a Don't Hug Me I'm Scared favorite, he's one of my favorites, he has an absolutely amazing voice to listen to, and his design is just fucking fantastic, the way the clock handles are the mustache. I just absolutely love Tony, I love his personality, and I think so does the rest of the Don't Hug Me I'm Scared community. And although he says eventually everyone runs out of time, I think Tony the Clock with his excellent personality, his memorable song has stood the test of time, and I think his Don't Hug Me I'm Scared episode will always be remembered as a great. So obviously I'm giving Tony a 5 out of 5. I mean I literally made a figurine of Tony the Clock out of an old broken high school clock. What do you expect? And finally, we have the cinematography, which I like, but I don't love. The video is obviously fantastically shot, but I have to put these things into perspective versus the other episodes. Now, don't get me wrong, the escalator through time visual is pretty neat, and so is the olden Victorian people. But I just think compared to the cinematography of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared 1, I like this just a little bit less. I also think the breakdown at the end isn't nearly as creepy, it's not as gory. And don't get me wrong, it's pretty gory, but Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared 1 just had some fucked up things going on at the end there. So I think for the visuals, I'm gonna have to go with a nice average 3 out of 5. And I feel really shitty saying that, because compared to any normal piece of shit YouTube video on this platform, the visuals are a fucking 100% A+, 5 on the AP exam sort of shit. But I have to put this into perspective with its competition, which is the other Don't Hug Me I'm Scared episodes. But with the scores plugged in, Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 2 gets a final of 4.00. It makes you sad, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> huh? That there's so much hatred in the world. And up next, we have Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 3, which is about love, religion, it can be interpreted as a lot of things. And right away, for the musical quality, 5 out of fucking 5. This song is fantastic. I could unironically plug this shit into my Spotify playlist and fucking just go jamming on it. Okay, sorry, that was a little passionate, but this song has some of the best musical moments in the whole series, hands down, easy peasy. I think the best little musical moment of this entire series is that build up at the end where they're worshipping Malcolm and in the background you just hear the R King and then the B just goes on this excellent monologue and just explains this like just this excellent criticism of love and religion and just this build up and then it leads to yellow guy just screaming when he realizes it was all kind of a dream. And overall, just the instrumental right away gets going, it's never slow really, it doesn't take a break, it just, it feels the most like an actual song out of this whole series. And there's just not much to be said, you listen to it, it's just musically superior to any of its other counterparts, sorry to spoil the rest of the video, but it's just the best, 5 out of 5. But unfortunately, Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 3 will not get a perfect score, because its antagonist might just be the worst in the entire series. I mean, literally, we don't even know what its species is. Is it a little baby pigeon? Well, what is it? But seriously though, the bee just doesn't cut it for me. He's a very subpar personality. He gets overshadowed by the tree, by the blue bunny, by Malcolm, the god himself. And although I absolutely love his vocals, he's just not always there in the song to remind me of who he is. He just doesn't have much of a personality by himself. Like with the notepad and the clock, they were standalone, they were their own independent characters who represented their ideas through their own song, but the bee just feels like some weird religious recruiter who brought Yellow Guy back to his gang and then they all just sing to him, so it's like they're all the villain in a sense. But the bee technically is the main antagonist, he's the main one, and he just doesn't feel like a main primary character, I just, he's very forgettable in this whole Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 3. And because of that, I think he's just kind of a dud to be honest, so we're gonna have to hand out a 1 out of 5. But don't worry, because Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 3 makes up for it with the excellent visuals. I adore 
the moments where he takes yellow guy back to his gang you have just the lovey beautiful looking clouds and then just the pink world where his gang resides and it's just all these clouds being the bushes it's just an absolutely beautiful scenery and i'm just mesmerized with the wilderness outdoorsy vibe that this episode gives off i think this is another five out of five for the visuals and once again with that ending moment where just the most beautiful part of the song plays it's also accompanied by some great visuals everyone in these creepy robes as malcolm sits there and they feed him gravel and there's just that like random gravel text that pops up i just absolutely adore the visuals and the song in dog man scared 3. and if we plug those numbers into the uh old equation i made up that's once again another 4.00 which is a real shame in my opinion because I love Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 3 just a little bit more than Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 2 but it's just the B that's the only reason why they're the same score. Wow, look! I'm a computer. I'm a computer guy. And moving on we have Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 4 which is about computers and technology. Starting off with the song, I absolutely love the digital sounding beat. It's a very memorable and catchy instrumental. However, what drags it down is the computer's just annoying voice. Like, I get it. It's a computer, it's digital, it sounds like that, like a digital assistant. And I also understand that if there was not a digital voice singing the song, it would be a little more off-putting. But it just doesn't do it for me. However, the audio design to the music I absolutely love. Like, when it flashes back from inside the computer to outside the computer, I love how when they're outside the computer, it sounds like the song is more in the distance, playing off of some shitty computer speakers. Absolutely love that detail, so happy that they did that. I also love the flow of the lyrics through most of the song. Obviously it gets corrupted at the end like they all do, but when the song is rolling, it's rolling really smoothly, I feel. So because of that, I think it deserves a 4 out of 5. It's just the computer voice that kind of puts it off for me. And up next, we have the man himself, the computer. I'm about 99% sure that the computer's name is Colin, and that already tells you that he's more memorable than the notepad or the bee. I love the way he interrupts the globe at the beginning just to steal what the song is about. I love how he's kind of narcissistic and is willing to boast about himself. He's just, uh, he's just a brainiac, which makes sense because he's a damn computer. And I don't think he's as memorable as Tony the Clock, but he does remain as one of the more memorable villains out of all of Don't Hug Me I'm Scared. So Kyle on the computer earns himself a 4 out of 5. And finally we have the visuals, and I'm sorry but I have to give it a 5 out of 5. The beginning setting is excellent, I love the living room area that they're in where they're playing that board game, and then inside the computer just blows my mind every time I watch it. I love how everything's this kind of low poly digital animation, it just reminds me of 1990s internet. They even sneak visual references to past episodes within the computer which is just amazing to find and look at. And I love just the black room where they do the three things that you can do on the internet and it just repeats over and over getting more and more corrupted. The visuals to the computer episode are just absolutely breathtaking. So yet again for the cinematography and the visuals we gotta hand out a 5 out of 5. And just like that, Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 4 slips into the lead with a score of 4.25. Are you hungry? You look to be a bit hungry. No. And next up, we have Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 5, which is about being healthy. Now to kick things off, the instrumental for this one is pretty zany, pretty crazy. I like it overall. However, I wouldn't say it's as memorable and unique as, say, episode 2 or 4, and I just don't think it's as quality as episode 3. But I'll give it this, it's pretty fun to listen to, and I like the way that the steak sounds as he sings along to it, and even the can sometimes. I think overall that puts the music of this episode into a pretty average place, so I think it deserves a 3 out of 5. Next up we have the main antagonist, and he's gonna share some of the problems with the B from Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 3. Unfortunately, the stake, and I have no idea what his name is, just kinda gets overshadowed by some of the other characters and some of the other scenery in this episode. And unfortunately, this just leaves him to be not very memorable, his voice isn't that great, he's just kinda average. His personality is a little in your face, he's very touchy, but he's just, no one remembers that really. 
So unfortunately, just like our friend the bee, aka the little baby pigeon, we're gonna have to give the steak a 1 out of 5. And finally, we have the visuals to this episode, and don't worry, it picks up from here. Now right away, I have to give points to the most disturbing moment in the series, which is where the green guy just gets his guts eaten out by the can and then yellow guy eats his own friends? I just love that final scene as the camera fades out, it's all pitch black and Yellow Guy's just sitting there, all of his friends flesh all over the counter, he just looks absolutely disgusting. That's a really cool moment, but unfortunately the episode does just kind of take place in the kitchen. And I feel like a lot of the visual moments in this episode tend to be forgotten because it does just take place in the same one or two rooms. But the creepy in this episode is very creepy and I love the way it gets that across through the visual means, so we're gonna have to award it a 4 out of 5 on the visual platform. And when we plug my ratings into my little equation, it comes out to be 2.75. No! Dreams are a movie that live in your head up. Every night when you sleep in your bed. <laughs> and finally, we have the last episode, which is about dreams. Now, I'm gonna say this right away, I don't really like comparing this one to the other five episodes because it's sort of a collage of all those five episodes. So for this one, I'm gonna kinda speed run through the ratings here. The lamp character, in my opinion, is a one out of five. He's hardly even a main character in his own episode. And if we're just gonna talk about the song that the lamp sings, it's obviously a one out of five. The music isn't as signature or unique and his voice is just so damn annoying. But if we're counting the other characters though, that's where the music starts to kick in. I'll teach you how to buy a canoe. Now the visuals are a 5 out of 5. We get to see all the old characters reworked. They look just a little bit different, a little shinier, a little newer. And I love all of them. But now let's talk. Even though my little equation that I set up gives Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 6 a mere 2.00, it is not the worst Don't Hug Me I'm Scared. Because what Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 6 represents is a collage, an ending, a final conclusion to the Don't Hug Me I'm Scared franchise. What we see with Red Guy is like nothing we've ever seen Becky and Joe shoot for any other normal episode of Don't Hug Me I'm Scared. And it just feels like the lamp and the dream song is just kind of a throwaway for Red Guy to manipulate and play with and just for us to see the full picture. It's hardly an episode of Don't Hug Me I'm Scared if we're just looking at the lantern. So overall, Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 6's score doesn't really mean anything compared to its brethren. It's its own separate being, basically. So with that being said, let's take a final look at all the scores. And oh god, this is awkward. We have a lot of ties. But, and I don't mean to blue ball you, I'm completely fine with this. Like a lot of you, each of these episodes are special to me. It's really hard for me to compare them, especially against each other. I thought coming into this that Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 3 was going to be my absolute favorite because I thought it always was my favorite. But I think it's really interesting that my personal winner is actually Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 4. I could have manipulated that equation to look any way, I could have waited anything, I could have waited the villain more than the song, I just chose the song because that's what matters slightly more to me. And I think I love that Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 1 and 5 tie or that 2 and 3 tie. Because if you were to ask me, which Don't Hug Me I'm Scared do you like more? One or five? Which Don't Hug Me I'm Scared do you like more? Two or three? I'm not sure I could shoot you a straight answer. Because for example, three musically is my favorite. It's my favorite song. But Tony the Clock is probably my favorite character. But I also love the visuals in Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 1. But I love the creepiness in Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 5. It's just, there's so many great things about each of these. But that's the conclusion to my supposed ranking. I might just retitle this video Grading, or something along that line. But holy shit, I've recorded almost 150 raw audio files to use in this video, so I need to stop. But with that being said, I hope you guys don't mind my large absence in terms of the commentary videos. But until next time, have a good one and thank you for watching.